Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy, for nerds by nerds. I'm Ted, and today I'm hanging out with Nerdarchist Dave. And today we're going to dive back into Volo's Guide, bringing you the denizens of the deep, the sea spawn, and the deep sea scion. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. It's a great way to get gaming tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Once again, we delve back into Volo's Guide to the Monsters. But instead of doing one monster, we decided to do two. Dos. And there's a reason for it. So this time we have the Sea Spawn, found on page 189, and the Deep Scion, found on page 135. So the reason we're doing them together is they both kind of have that feel of, hey, you used to be a person and you're being transformed by the depths. And both of them have that same feel. So rather than rehash the same old, same old, we'll do them together. Yeah, the, I mean, they have distinctions, but I feel like any kind of adventure you would do, these monsters could be interchangeable, or it might include both of them. Correct. So, both, like Ted said, both of these monsters are essentially people that have been claimed by the sea, or creatures of the sea, and made into servants, usually against their will. <laughs> so, I actually, I look at the Scion, and I'm like, you know, this would be really cool to have someone be a deep scion and be in the party because they still have essentially all the features of what they were before and they could be setting up a sabotage you know it's great for a, a one shot or a, a short arc campaign where you want to throw a little bit of betrayal into the game and you have get a player on board and oh tables are turned at just the right moment and I, you've done these kind of things before and this is a perfect it's the per perfect opportunity to be able to do it. It's the doppelganger, right? But this doppelganger is very specific. Right. So w with the Deep Scion, the, the concept is a person gets claimed by the sea, they're going to die or one way or another, whether by chance or by design, <laughs> and a powerful entity of the sea goes, hey, you know what? You don't have to die. All you have to do is say... You work pledge for me your, now. Yeah, <laughs> you pledge your pledge your soul, body and soul, mind, body and soul to me, and we can fix this. And they do. They make you exactly as you were, except for now you also have the ability to kind of fish out. <laughs> you can shape change and get some some weird stuff, and you've got the, the ability to be completely amphibious and get some cool claws going on, and the ability to go, Rah! And, you know, hurt everything around you. Y yes, well, what Ted is really saying is one of their special abilities is a telepathic screech that can stun creatures around them within 30 feet, but also, it also if you're in a the same body of water as your master, the last 24 hours that you've that you've uh, witnessed and gone through is gets telepathically sent to them. As long as you're in the same body of water, it doesn't matter how far away, you're miles and miles away, no problem, the boss will get it. Yeah, you, you can Aquaman message him. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, these guys are a little more independent and they're they're awesome spies. Yes, they're designed they're designed to bring down those land lubbers and their machinations so that the creatures of the sea can thrive. Well, they're they're designed to infiltrate and in whatever their master's design sure. is because in, in both of these monsters they talk about avalis and krakens and dragon turtles, dra you know, dragon turtles, turtles, uh, storm giants, morkoths, which is another monster in uh, from previous editions, but it's it's resurfaced again in Volus Guide the Monsters. Nice, more evil fishy folk. Oh, because you know, avalis wasn't enough. All well, right. why not? You know, marrow or other evil. You know, human races performing rituals that make make these things as well. So, Sahagan. So, there's a ton of different way that either one of these monsters can can be used. But at the same time, they both very much have that very uh, Cthulian feel to them. The sea is a sea spawn. Sea spawn. Yeah. The sea spawns. They literally have a sidebar for Forgotten Realms that was basically ripped off of Innis Mouth. <laughs> and. You know, if you're familiar with that Lovecraftian story, it, you know you know basically you know, it's a settlement that they you know they worship the, the great old ones and, and and basically they sacrifice themselves to them and they can co they come back and they basically end up with these uh, Pisine traits, right? And, you know, and so now, it says that they basically they throw their babies in the water and they 
come out as adults sometime later. And when they start to get old, they turn into sea spawn and go back in the water. Clearly, these guys have never heard the saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because <laughs> they're clearly doing the opposite. So, it, it's pretty cool. It definitely gives a nice oddball feel if you want to allow your allow your adventurers to travel into a city that is going to make them raise their eyebrow right, right off. It's like, wait a second, there's no elderly, there's no kids anywhere. What? I kind of like did. I kind of did a little bit of this in one of the fan games I ran, uh-huh. and the big bad was a was a kraken, and basically the town that they kind of went to investigate or whatever, they were all in league with the kraken. They worshipped it. So and, these and would have been your perfect agents. This y- yeah, these would have been a great monster to throw in there as well, and, and that's exactly what the what these guys are designed for. And they're weird and creepy, so so they're a lot of fun. Both monsters are both CR threes, so they're not, they're not super high level, uh, but they're they're high enough where you could use like one or two of them against a low level party, mm-hmm. and it would be a challenge, or you could use a mob of them against a higher level party, and they'd be a challenge as well. Well, the great part about the sea spawn is it literally says here that they have an you know an anatomical diversity, so you can throw whatever you want on there. An individual might have a tentacle for an arm, the jaws of a shark, a sea urchin spine, a whale's fin, octopus eyes, seaweed hair, or any combination of such qualities. So anything aquatic that you want to throw onto these things to make them more obnoxious, go for it. Yeah, that's very cool about them. And one of the other main differences between between the Sea Spawn and uh, the Deep Scions is Deep Scions can be away from water unlimitely. Like they don't have to do anything. They don't. They're, they're fine. These guys got to be submerged once a day for an hour. Yeah, they these guys have to keep getting wet or they dry out and it'll eventually kill them. Uh, so so that's also an important difference. And also where the the Deep Scions, I see them as agents of this power to be where these guys are minions and foot soldiers and it literally s- says they are slaves to the to, to the thing and they love it <laughs> they're loving it you know they're which, all about it which harkens back to that whole Catholian feel where it's like all right they're my life they're 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 literally nothing more than a puppet yeah and the the other thing that's really nice about these monsters as well is there's they're so interchangeable not with the not just with each other with different stories you know, different villains. Like, they're, they're just great minions that you can <laughs> throw in there if you're running any kind of aquatic or coastal adventure or an island adventure. There's just, there's a lot of ways you could use these. You know, you could crew a pirate ship with either of these, you know, that they, they're servants oh, you, of some you power. Could have, you could have the Scion be the captain yes. and the crew is spawn. Absolutely. And you, you know what that would feel like to me? That would that would like kind of be like harking back to like Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, the Davy Jones. The, yes, and the Davy Jones and his crew. So there's there's a lot of ways to use these guys. It's, they're, they're very simplistic. There's not a whole lot going on with them, but I think they they could add a lot of depth to an adventure or even an encounter. It, there, there's times that you need an NPCs that can function as monsters and have that fanatical devotion that you don't have to like really drive it home it's right here they got it they're icky they're creepy <laughs> the other thing that the, the deep science is worth mentioning they're very skill heavy they are they've got like uh, four different skills that you have access to so that's deception insight sleight of hand stealth so and, that's, know, and that's just the, the base that's before you decide to apply it to a quote-unquote character if you want to bump that up into some something or someone. Right, if you wanted to add those traits to an NPC and make it uh, more of a threatening creature. And the other thing about the Deep Science, too, is when you kill them, they revert to their natural form. You could definitely, like, if you're running an adventure with them and maybe they're never in their natural form when the players are encountering, encountering them as the monster, or they don't know the difference. Uh-huh. Like, in their mind, they're two different things. Right. So you finally kind of get to the kid to the conclusion or the apex of the adventure, and they finally kill this deep scion, a friend, or a loved one, you know, or an you know, or their or an acquaintance that's important to the town or something like that, and it could really be this mind blowing, uh, sh- you know, campaign shattering thing if it was someone that was really important. It's also great as a lead in for a low level party, low level adventure to something bigger. 
you know, maybe this is like the first clue that there's an a- there's an outside force influencing a community, whether it's a Kraken, whether it's an Aboleth, and you know, you can kind of like ratchet up from there. Well, I mean, you you could you could totally just have it be a a, a stepping stone. They got to deal with. You know these guys, and then they're going to deal with the the tribe of of Sahagan because they're also working for the thing, but they're going to appear more on mass, and then by that point in time, maybe you're ready for you know a solo monster. And then it comes down. There's a ton of way to use tons of ways to use these guys. Again, I think they're both from previous editions, like everything else involves this guy. They put an, inter- a, an interesting spin on them. They're going to be useful monsters in your 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Let us know if you're using them in your game, or how you would use them in the game. your game, in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can uh, support us in a, in a good way over on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.